Hello and welcome to Win32 Reverse Engineering course. Now let's see what this course is going to entail. The course roadmap is as follows. We have five chapters in this course. The first one is an introduction. It's going to give you an overview of computers and what they are, operating systems and the platforms that exist in computers, assembly language and assembly programming, which is going to be a detailed overview but at the same time, it's not enough to learn the entirety of assembly language. You might need to um, come prepared with your own knowledge or do some external um, education on this topic before continuing it through the course. We're going to talk about PE format, which is the portable executable Windows executable file format. And then we're going to introduce a set of tools that we're going to use throughout the rest of the course. In the second chapter, we're going to talk about DRM reversing. DRM stands for Digital Rights Management. This is basically the protection that's put on software. Uh, it's called licensing, serial numbers, and a lot of different things. But all of them pretty much use the same techniques. And we're going to discuss those in this chapter. But before jumping into the technical details of those, we're going to introduce IDA Pro and OLEDBG, which are two important platforms for reverse engineering. Uh, IDA Pro is available on all platforms, Windows, Linux, Mac, but all the DBG is mostly geared towards Windows, and this is what we're going to use for most of the course. We're going to talk about Delphi binaries, Borland binaries, a lot of different things. Then we're going to get to password protection, serial phishing, key genning, patching, integrity checks, etc., all of which are available on many binaries and many applications, and how we can uh, discover them and reverse engineer them. In chapter three, we're going to talk about protected binaries. These are the same binaries as chapter two, but they've added a layer of protection on top. These protections are usually done by automated tools known, and pa known as packers. So we're going to talk about unpacking and the set of packers and overlays that exist, how they work and what they do and how we can reverse engineer them. We're going to talk about API redirection, inline patching, loaders, and a lot of different things. In chapter four, we're going to talk about non-binary files. This includes PDF files, SWF files, Microsoft Office files, .NET files, JavaScript files, and then we're going to wrap it up with a thorough shellcode analysis to, to show you what exactly a shellcode is, which is basically a initial step for an infected file to download and set up malware on a system. And that's where we get to uh, chapter five, which is about elementary malware analysis. Keep in mind that malware analysis on its own is an extended huge topic. So in this course, we're just going to talk about the elementary malware analysis and not thoroughly. Uh, we're going to talk about a three-step approach, which includes online tools, static analysis, and dynamic analysis, and tell you a little bit more about malware and where to go from there. And that's going to wrap up the course for us. Now, before jumping into the course, let's overview some of the prerequisites. We need to be familiar with some basic software programming. It does not need to be advanced, but we do need to know algorithms, loops, arrays, and things like that. So basically, some familiarity with command line Python or C would be enough. We do need to be familiar with computer architecture and assembly programming. We're going to extensively use assembly programming throughout this course, but don't worry if you're not familiar with it. We're going to have a thorough review. Uh, the, the subject is deep. But uh, as you go throughout the course and feel like you need to know more about it, you're welcome to browse other resources. It's not something that, that will hinder your progress. And then we also need a Windows XP virtual machine. We're going to use Windows XP because uh, newer versions of Windows, such as Vista 8 and 10, have many built-in protections against reverse engineering and hacking. So they're going to make the training a lot more difficult. All of this training was recorded inside of Windows XP virtual machine. Uh, once you master these concepts, all of them apply to more modern Windows as well as Linux and Mac. So that's why we start with this bare platform. And generally, reverse engineering on Mac OS and Linux is easier than Windows because they're open source. They have a lot of tool tools available, whereas Windows does not. So this is going to uh, be important because we want to address Windows. And once we're comfortable with reverse engineering on Windows, it should be pretty easy to migrate to another platform. Um, another important thing to mention is that reverse engineering techniques and con concepts do not change very frequently. So once you learn these topics, they're probably going to be valid for the next 10 to 20 years. There's going to be some additional stuff that comes along the way, but the general concepts are not going to change as rapidly. This is not like exploit development or web application security that changes every five years. So that's a good thing. 
And as I said, Linux and Mac have certain tools and system capabilities that generally make reverse engineering a lot easier than Windows. But at the same time, Windows has most of the malware and protections. So it's the platform that you usually want to target. Another important thing is that this course is all about 32-bit reverse engineering. A lot of new software are in 64-bit, but 64-bit platforms and binaries have a lot more uh, complexity to them and a lot more features. So we're not going to start talking about them. We'll give you some pointers on what the differences are and where you can go from there. But generally, this course is going to address 32-bit assembly and 32-bit uh, binaries and platforms. But once you master these things, it shouldn't be a steep curve to jump onto the 64-bit platform. So with all that in mind, let's jump right into the course.